Good morning guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I got a really interesting video for you today. A bit of bread and butter with stock and some pieces that are a bit out of my comfort zone. So stay tuned to the very end, you'll find out exactly what I got and what it's worth. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So stake your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay, welcome back. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, about five or six lots to show you in today's video and you won't believe what I've actually got. I've got a Picasso. <laughs> I know. Anyway, we'll move on and we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to start off with a croquet set. It's probably uh, 1950s or 60s. Um, looks like pine, pine clubs with plastic handles. It's quite a nice set. Um, now it owes me £10. But... That's all right for a tenner, I can put it in the shop. Um, it's all there, it's got the croquet balls, it's got the mallets, it's got the pegs, it's got the stand. It's a nice little set, and if somebody wants it for the kids on the lawn or something, then it'll sell. It's just something quirky and different in my shop. Okay, so moving on to the croquet sets, and some of them pull stupid money, but we're just gonna scroll down now until we come across one that looks like I've got. And there we have it. But they, they've just put it down as a vintage croquet set with trolley. Slight variation to the one I've got there. Um, but pretty much the same thing. And they are 20 quid. Well, I've actually put 35 on mine in the shop. And to be honest with you, I don't mind. I'm not in a rush for it to sell. It'll add something to the shop. I'm going to move on to a little measure or beaker of some description. It's engraved on the front, some initials. Looks like KMW or something like that. It needs a clean, it's stinking dirty. However, if you look right by there, it is solid silver. And it's a good weight, guys. Now, that owes me eight pounds. And this owes me two pounds, because they come in together for a tenner. Um, what I have is a solid brass tortoise, I would say tortoise, uh, but it's a magnifying glass for when you're doing your reading. It's just quirky, it's not going to have a lot of value, but I thought it's nice, it'll go on the shelf in the shop and it'll be something different. Every antique dealer knows what this name is, Royal Crown Derby. Now, Crown Derby is a name that holds big money, guys. Always has, always will. Two seconds as I unwrap this for you to see. Now, what I've got is the Imari Pattern Breakfast Cup and Saucer. Some of this stuff pulls big, big money. This is really yeah, old Imari, the pattern is not Imari. Um, and it's the Royal Crown Derby. If you can get some of the early stuff in this, then you're talking money. But this is still going to be a really nice little item. Now, I paid a tenner for this. But as I've said, it's mint and it's boxed. So, we'll find out what it's worth in just a little while. Now, Okay, guys. So, just want to give you a search now on the old Imari Royal Crown Derby. Highest price. And we got... Um, Thirty-piece dinner service that is for twenty-one hundred. Um, a trophy vase, another vase, a terrine. You can see the prices on these things, anyway, guys. Look at that! A pair of elephants, seven hundred pound. That's not bad. Is it? A gravy sauce boat, six hundred and twenty pounds. So yeah. 
say interesting would be an understatement. You'll have to excuse the background noise. It is hammering down outside. That's why it's quiet in the shop. Anyway, that gives you an idea, guys, on some of the prices of the old Imari pattern. I'm going to come across now, and in this search, I've just searched for the cup and saucer. And they start off at £150, but that's a set of five. Um, a single layer, they want 80, 70, 40, all the way down to 15, and down to a tenner. But the one I got, I can tell you now, I'm going to be asking 35, 40 pound, and I should get it, no problems. Um, I've got two pieces left. The one is a selection of badges, which I'll show you in a minute, but we'll move on to the Picasso. And there we have it. It's not a real Picasso, it's a uh, livograph or a print of a Picasso. However, it is done uh, in a limited edition and <laughs> I can't even pronounce this Gisli prints. But it's got the seal um, on the bottom corner there. Hopefully, you can see that. Just there is the seal. So we're going to have a look online at what Picasso prints are pulling. Now the people have brought it in to me, apparently they paid £350 for this um, some years ago. I can't see why, that's a lot of money. However, I ain't going to argue if they bought it in a gallery for £350, Brian haven't paid much for it guys, it owes me £25. So you can hang a Picasso in your home for £25. Yeah. And it is a limited edition uh, live graph or print. So we'll have a look into that in a few minutes. Okay, so here's the closest I could find to the uh, Picasso print. And there we go. Picasso frame glazed monochromatic limited edition Gisli print. £350 they're asking. And if I come across here, I've just searched the same thing. A Gisli Picasso print on sold distance. So the highest one is 568. These are the colour ones, which are obviously going to be more desirable, in my opinion, in the 70s. And they're still going... Prices will come all the way down to around £20-25 if I'm not mistaken guys. The one I got isn't actually on there. There's another one, 40 quid of the lovers, very plain. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going all the way down, mine isn't on there. Just gives you an idea either way i'm doing all right on this uh, picasso and you never know it may hang up in the house yet <laughs> and i'll actually say i got a picasso so we'll see from there move on to my final lot for today and it is my cheapest and my favorite i have a selection of mining badges and i'm going to show you them just now guys okay so here's the little group of badges i got i've got two of these penrachiba a Pitworth saving badges. If I turn one of them over, you can see they are original badges. They'll fuse up the right way. Patent number, registration applied number, everything. Um, we're going to find out the history on these because I absolutely love them. I've also got free Shrewsbury pickets. So obviously they were locked up for picketing by the looks of it. So again, another really interesting badge. Because I live in uh, South Wales, we are all mining towns, old mining towns, so I absolutely love them. And we've got the National Union of Mine Workers Enamel Badge, and that is a lovely condition badge. Maker's mark to the rear there. And then I had, in with the group, a couple of Labour Party badges. Unity of the Labour is the 
world. Mm. Hope of ALP. Anyway, there's a nice little group of badges by yeah. They owe me about a five, I give or take. Um, but I love them. They may work, work out to be worth a pound, they may work out to be worth some serious money, but we'll find out very soon. But what can I say? I live in Penrakaiba, that's not how we spell Penrakaiba. So when they made these badges, they didn't have a clue. But anyway, we're going to have a look. Okay, guys, we're going to start off with the Penrakaiba badge of Pitworth Saving. Now, if I come across here, Penrakaiba badge produced during the 1984-85 miners' strike, and they've actually got them in the National Museum of Wales. Now, if I come across to it here, there's a lot of information. If you come to the museum dot Wales, and there it is, guys. Okay, that's the uh, address. Just pause the video and type that in. There's so much information here on the miners' strikes and the mines around where I live. It's shocking, to be totally honest with you. Really is. If you want to have a read, if you're interested in the uh, the mines and everything else, and it shows you some of the collection they've got in the museum. And there you go, there's my badge. Well, I happen to have two of them. So, yeah, that is what you'd call, guys, interesting and a bloody good find. Moving on, and I searched for this. Now, I found a badge. None that I can find any sold prices on, but this is really interesting. The Shoesby 24 campaign. And... Let me give you the uh, website to that one. I only read just a little bit off the top. It's been 34 years since the miners were set up and attacked by the police. Your campaign has worked tirelessly to reveal the truth of the events that, of that fateful day where we stood shoulder to shoulder with you and strive for justice. Now, from what I've understood, they've been fighting for 34 years for some men that were jailed for um, illegal gatherings and um, disturbing the peace and the phrase and things like that. So, again, another really good read, guys, okay? So, if you want to go and have a read for that. So, then I come over to eBay and I searched for the National Union of Mine Workers badge, which was this one here. Because the other two did are none on eBay, sold or current. And out of curiosity, I just typed in that and highest. Look at the highest price. £606 for a mining badge. £73 for four National Union badges. Well, the prices speak for themselves. What can I say, eh? This little group is obviously going to end up going online. Now I have found the one little enamel badge and I'll show you that in just a second. We'll get there now. It's actually quite a cheap one, but it doesn't matter. This is just giving you an idea of their prices. When you see a tub of badges on the uh, table, in boxes, whatever, buy them. Look at that. There he is, that little enamel badge is a tenner. I'm already in profit just off that one, guys. But what I'm thinking of doing, because of the prices, I'm thinking of putting a job lot together and putting them on eBay and seeing where they run as a bit of an experiment. Well, what can I say? My favourite uh, badges, um, what do we do? We find them in the National Museum of Wales. What can I say about that, guys? Um, I absolutely love them. I haven't decided yet whether to sell those or to keep them. I'll probably sell them. Um, but they are right, they touch a little heartstring because of where I'm from. You know, every direction you go in, there was an old coal mine. So, yep. The Picasso. Highest price I could find, three and a half hundred pound. Average price, 50s, 60s, 70s. That's okay. Don't mind that. There's a profit there. The Crown Derby. Well, it is what it is. I knew the price of that all the time anyway. The uh, Silver Cup. Well, I always buy silver and gold. Precious metals is something... I, 
I don't mind holding on to, I don't mind holding. The value can only go up. Um, I've done videos on investing in silver and gold and how to buy silver and gold cheap. So, you know, it's good value in precious metal, guys. And the croquet set, what can I say? It will sell. It may only sell for 25, 30 quid, but it's gonna be something different in my shop. When they come in, it's not all the same thing. Um, I like to have a bit of variety. I like my shop to look interesting. Um, my window display, if you saw what I done this week, I bought a load of toys and I filled my front window up with toys, all wrestling figure, action figures, I nearly called them dolls, all wrestling action figures and Star Wars figures and that, to draw in the children and when the children come in, the parents have to come in. And then the parents look at all the beautiful cabinets and buy some jewellery, so has to be done. Um, what can I say? The little, just finishing off, the little uh, magnifying glass is going to go for a 10 or 12 pound in the cabinet as a curio and it will sell. So all in all, I've done all right. I'm certainly quids in and got some nice working stock. Stock that I'm proud to put in the shop, guys. I'm not ashamed of anything new I've bought. I'm going to leave it there. I really hope you've enjoyed. If you have, guys, please support the channel by giving me a like and a share. I'd be very grateful. You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page in the group Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. My seller ID is Antiques Arena Clearance. Um, I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or you can come to the shop and see me if you live in the UK. Uh, it's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Guys, <laughs> what can I say? It's not every day a Picasso walks into your shop. <laughs> Bye for now.